How can a woman perform Hajj or Umrah without a mahram? Where does this idea come from? Um, it's interesting actually because a lot of people think that it's the Hajj itself intrinsically that can't be done without a mahram. A mahram, by the way, is someone that you can't marry, it's haram for you to marry, or uh, it, that kind of confuses people too. So it's someone who's an incredibly close. Uh, relation. So your husband, for example, your father, your son, your nephew, your your you know very very close people. Um, now uh, the idea behind it, of course, is that when you're traveling and there could be some issues and stresses and some difficulties or some things that need to be done, then these are close mem family mem male members are the ones who deal with it. So it's a blessed yani concept. It's something of the Sunnah, and the Prophet said that it's uh, that uh, no believing woman who uh, it is not permissible for a believing woman who believes in Allah and the last day to take a journey of a day and a night except with a male, uh, with a mahram, a male mahram. So uh, the hadith is there and that's why the majority, it can be argued, said that a woman is not allowed to make that distance travel without a mahram. There's no mention of hajj here, okay? So you might say, well hold on, so where did this whole discussion come from about the hajj? Ah, well, because obviously you have to travel, you have to travel to do Hajj and to do Umrah. That's why they said you can't do Hajj and Umrah without a mahram. Now that statement is not accurate, as 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 I've just explained, because it's to do with the travel, not the Hajj itself. And it is possible, theoretically, of course, for a woman to be living right next door to the Masjid al-Haram, and she'll do the whole act of Hajj and Umrah without needing to travel. Are they going to say that her Hajj is not is not valid? Of course they're not. So they're focusing more on people who are far away, and of course that's the majority of us as well in the West that this any yeah, question is being asked from as well. Um, there are other scholars however that said that this hadith which does not allow women to travel a distance of a day and night is actually restricted in this meaning. It's actually referring to difficult times and to, to uh, times where there's a real fear of some kind of problem or danger. And this is because another highly authentic hadith narrated by Bukhari as well, uh, Adi bin Hatim radiallahu anhu, he came to the Prophet sallallahu and they were sitting there, you know, there were people that were coming and complaining to the Prophet sallallahu of problems and issues and one person in particular came and said, you know, there's bandits and these robbers and these, you know, whatever, these criminals on the, on the street, they're causing us problems. And the Prophet sallallahu turned to Adi bin Hatim and he remarked to him, uh, Ya Adi, hal ra'ayt al -hira? Have you ever seen Al Hira, the city of Al Hira? And the Prophet and uh, Adi said, "Well, you know, I haven't seen it, but I have heard of it." And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him, "You know, a time's going to come if you live long enough to see it. All right, where a woman will be able to travel from Al Hira to the Kaaba, fearing no one in Allah. She will only." fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. There'll be no danger basically. And Adi himself was shocked because obviously number one Al-Hira, Hira a thousand miles away from the Kaaba, south, southern Iraq region. And you know the distance and the, 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 the terrain and he knew and he even said what about those robbers and what about those criminals but obviously the Prophet ﷺ has told him. And some of those scholars took this hadith to mean that if safety can be assured either because of the time and place or because of the group that, uh, that's being taken, most Hajj groups would be able to assure that. Um, they're believers, the Muslims that you're traveling with, not non-Muslims, that it is the people of same values, religious values, and they've got trust and, and so on, and they've got experience, then it is permissible to do that. This is the position of the Shafi'i school, and Ibn Taymiyyah is the one who articulated this the best. And it is my uh, position absolutely very clearly. I know that when I uh, travel, then a number of sisters would travel without mahram in my Hajj and in my Umrah groups. And there's no problem with that. But saying that, there is no doubt, and that's why it's so important to clarify this, that I would much prefer, as all scholars, as a consensus, would want women to travel with their mahram. The mahrams themselves give security. They ensure that no uh, doubt, no fitna is possible, that everything is safe. It is the right way, the marital discord and so on, that there's no doubts over what's happening, what's going on. Also, by going together, you share an experience, you build your own relationship. There are many, many benefits. And so I always encourage families and husband and wife to travel together. But if there are no husbands, for example, or divorcees, or those who believe that it's never going to happen because of logistical reasons, then it is permissible, as Ibn Taymiyyah said, for a woman to travel to Hajj and Umrah in the absence of a mahram as long as she is assured of her safety and I'm convinced of this opinion and Allah knows best. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and like the videos so that you can get notified of the new releases and consider donating to this worthy cause.